and we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today, slight change in plan. I was going to start colonizing other planets, but I ran into a little bit of a snag. I was uh, going to try and siphon out all of the radio radioactive waste or nuclear waste we were using as coolant in this and replace it with super coolant. But then I realized well, our power requirements quite right now are quite high. And if I had to shut off one reactor, it might actually redline our grid. Now, there's a few ways we could deal with that. But we also had some other issues that I thought we could maybe roll into fixing that one. One of the other problems we've got is down at the bottom here, we have a lot of nasty gases mixed together, and this is not helping the speed of our game. So I should really get rid of all of those. At the same time, we also have a mush tank full of liquids, probably not helping also. So I'd like to try and fix all of these problems at the same time with one solution. And uh, that one solution is we're going to do geothermal power, like just a whole chunk of it, and we're going to boil up all of this water. It's going to be controlled geothermal power now, nothing uh, nothing like where we're going to dump all of this water just on top of the magma biome. No, but first, first we need a nice little controlled area here where we can build ourselves in a bunch of steam turbines to harness all of this lovely magma power. Now the reason I've chosen here is there's two oil wells over here, there's an oil well right there, there's another oil well over here. So it was either we did it over this side or we did it in between these two stacks of oil wells. So I figured here was right underneath the water tank, which should make things a little bit more convenient. So let's uh, seal this off, vacuum it out, and get in some liquid locks for access in and out. Whenever you're working with magma, it's always a good idea to vacuum out the whole area and make sure no gases can touch it. We're going to strip this top layer of abyssalite off, and we can't have anything else in here or else this place will get super toasty for our duplicates. And I'm going to stockpile some obsidian nearby because we're going to need that for ladder segments and things like that because anything else will, will just melt in this magma pile. I think if we can strip this out and get it nice and flat, we'll chuck some metal tiles on top of that and we'll use those to dump the heat into our, um, well, geothermal? I'm not sure. I think we're going to stack this maybe two, to two rows high. We'll have to see how much space we've got to work with. One quick note, there's this entombed warning over here. Yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about that. That's actually a temp shift plate. It's the temp shift plate we have up here inside our crop cooling area. And that one is right back at the back of this, right in that section to inject cold into both of those metal tiles so that our crops end up nice and chill. And they have served us, it has served us in good stead. These crops are all growing perfectly. But no, no. For here, we're focusing on getting a bunch of geothermal up and then we're going to convert all of this water into an awful, awful lot of steam. I think we'll use this as sort of a... It's going to act as water filtration while simultaneously acting as backup power. We're going to keep loads of steam in here ready to go so that we can flick it on and just get power out of it as we need it. Now comes the fun part. And by fun part, I mean the incredibly dangerous part of digging into magma because, okay, enjoyable as it is, it's also a little bit tricky. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to use obsidian on these layers of tiles. Well, as ladder segments. In fact, if we grab up, where is it? Uh, minerals. You'll notice that I've change out all of these bottom layers to obsidian. This top stuff is igneous rock. We'll probably be removing that at some point, but this will at least get us started and it will ensure that our ladder system won't evaporate and leave our duplicates trapped. Yeah, we're probably going to be using an awful lot of obsidian here to get this working. I've also dumped a whole bunch of the stuff over here. Wait, that's the igneous. Yeah, we got obsidian there. We got nine tons of the stuff. We've got 20 tons of steel on standby and a bunch of lead. I'd like to have the construction materials close by just in case we do need them. So, uh, let's do some very delicate surgery on this abyssalite. Once we've stripped off everything we can without exposing any magma, I think the smart plan is to start at the very bottom. Well, I say that I think the smart plan is, it, this is not something you get to do very often, or it's not something I've got a lot of practice at. I think I've done this maybe once. So I figure if we start at the bottom, this uh, magma's very viscous, it won't push back up, and then we can slowly strip out the rest and see where it kind of evens out. This here is the center of the area, so I think we're going to put ourselves a heat spike down here. Assuming the mechanics for building a heat spike haven't changed, which, yeah, it's been a while since I built one of those. Let's, let's see how, if the devs have been nice to us. This always feels so stupidly dangerous when you're doing it, because if you take out a tile that a dupe is standing on, they could potentially fall. And, yeah, you won't have enough time to get them out of there before they scald themselves to death. This isn't like a, a lack of oxygen thing. You can't really seal them off anywhere. If they fall in, they're gone. It does make things very nerve-wracking. However, we are going to put our heat spike through right here. I think a steel door to start, a couple of diamond tiles either side. Yeah, we're probably going to need more diamond by the end of this. And then we're going to drill that sucker straight down through here. That will push some of the magma out of the way and we'll see where it ends up before we decide to place our uh, the bottom of our, our little power plant here. It 
does look like this bug still works. Well, bug, feature, whatever you want to call it. You can build a steel door through a steel door without opening the door, but only on the downwards orientation. So for example, what we do here is we set this door so that it can't be opened. Then we set this door so that it can be opened. And then we queue up a door on the other side. Oh, and we might as well queue these up to go down a bit. I don't think we're going to go all the way to the bottom. We don't really need to in this instance. I think we'll just go down to about there and then we'll just queue up the doors all the way down. I still remember accidentally discovering this and thinking, yeah, is this okay? Should we be doing this? But you know what? It's the handiest way to make a heat spike. You can still do a heat spike without this trick. It's just an awful lot more difficult and it probably results in a lot more scaldings and it's time consuming. This is just a handy way of doing it and it's sort of, eh, it works for me. This is going to take a few minutes to do, uh, but just to reiterate, you can build the agony through here, so you can actually build these diamond window tiles while standing on top of this door. They're safely protected from the magma because the door they're standing on top of, no one can pass through it. Meaning you sort of end up with this little C-shaped design, and then you can diagonally build the diamond window tiles. You can build a mechanical airlock on the other side, or the mechanized airlock on the other side, just assuming it's made out of steel. Best be steel. If it's not steel, that stuff will melt. And then you just keep slowly drilling down. It's a little bit time consuming, but you know what? It's a nice way to get our heat spike through. Sometimes you will make the odd mistake, but that's okay. If a little bit of magma escapes, there's always the door crusher technique and we can dispose of that problem and get right back to work. The whole point of this heat spike is we want to suck all the heat out of the magma as deep as we possibly can. If we just basically strapped on some diamond across the top here, we'd be able to remove the heat from this area pretty quickly, but then, well, it's not that you run out really quickly, it's just that it's much slower the further you go out. So this heat spike will allow us to basically draw heat from all the way down here, all the way up to the top as necessary, and it gets us a better draw on this side. As well as that, as this magma starts to solidify, we can actually come back down here and start drilling out left to right, installing more temperature shift plates, more diamond, more everything, and just sucking more and more heat out of here. The plan, well, the long-term goal for this would be to sort of solidify the entire magma biome, to drain all the heat out of it as far as we could. Might not be able to get all the way to the... Uh, the west side of the map, that's an awful long distance to drain heat from, but we could definitely drain at least a fair chunk of it that direction. Now, we've got a checkerboard pattern of temperature shift plates here, though... Ooh, how can I explain how terrible this is? Well, also the point of it. Uh, these things don't... For example, this temperature shift plate here is not going to be able to transfer temperature to this temperature shift plate over here. There needs to be some sort of medium in between, gas, liquid, or a tile. So if we did put a tile there, like that, then we could transfer temperature, but well, these would be transferring temperature between each other. But there's no point. All these are doing is, this is sharing temperature with these three tiles here, which is sharing temperature with these tiles. This is sharing temperature with that. So it basically allows the, this right side to basically draw heat all the way from the bottom, all the way to the top, and same on the left side. That's pretty much what we're doing. We're trying to even out the, the heat draw. At the same time, it would be really nice to open that door and build a temperature shift plate on the other side, but I don't think we're going to. That would, uh, that would let an awful lot of magma in. You can see it's quite compressed down there. But that should be our heat spike. Now I'm thinking we might actually move that up another tile or two. And then we can build all of our, uh, well, our, our steam turbines on top of that. And their job will be to slowly but surely drain all the heat out of this magma biome. Well, simultaneously filtering all of our water for, well, the foreseeable future. This should last several thousand cycles if we do it right. First thing we need to do is to make a hot plate, somewhere where we're going to boil all our water. This is probably going to be the height of it here. We'll have these two doors to inject the heat, and then this will act as the top of our hot plate. Yeah, that's 1500 degrees. That's, that's pretty toasty. Temperature shift plates are all still coming up to speed, but... Yeah, this, this should allow us to do an awful lot of cooking. Alright, uh, we might want to put in some automation and a few bits and bobs, and then we're going to see how much space we have left for strapping steam turbines on top. The plan would be to seal this area in here, and then, well, we still want to be able to get in access to this point so that we can go down here and perform maintenance later on. So we're going to wall in across the top here with uh, some insulated tiles. Do we need the insulated tiles? Probably not, but you know what? Let's be safe rather than sorry. That's always the motto when playing Ani, because let's face it, the duplicants will find a way to break stuff, and you've got to make sure you're as prepared as possible for when they do. That actually looks pretty good. It, it's it got that nice T-shape going on. This looks like something I might have actually planned from the start. I didn't. <laughs> I really wish I had, but that actually works out quite nicely. We've got these little service tunnels here from either side, so whether we can service this area, we could put a blob of liquid there to act as a gas seal. But first we've got to figure out how do we strap the most steam tur turbines possible inside this area. That's going to be a little bit tricky. Hmm. Uh, 
the plan will be we'll boil all the water on this hot plate but how do we make sure we have an, as crammed as many steam turbines as possible? For every five steam turbines, we can extract 10 kilos of clean water. I'd prefer to have at least, well, 10 steam turbines in here, if not more. I know this doesn't look uh, perfectly explainable right now, but don't worry, it will make sense as we start to install the steam turbines. There's a few bits and pieces missing, but this, this should be able to hold about four steam turbines in here. We'll be chucking them all on that side. Four steam turbines in here, four, four. So that's four, eight, 12. That's 16 steam turbines we'll be able to run off this. But realistically, it's not so much the power, it's a combination of the power and the water filtration. We'll be able to dump salt water in here. Salt water will get boiled up, it'll leave the salt behind, and then we can filter out the clean water. We'll basically get power and clean water, either one or both, whichever one we want, whenever we want. That's sort of the whole goal of this. And then we are going to need a nice big water tank to store this all in, though. Every time we start filtering, or every time we turn this on, we're going to end up with a whole output of clean water. Now, we could dump it back in here and recycle it, but... We, we don't want to. We want to keep cleaning new sources of water. For example, we've got this giant tank of salt water up here that we haven't been using. I want to take full advantage of that geyser, make sure that it's used all the time during its uh, active dormant phases, and we just want to filter all that water. So I think what we're going to do is make this a, sort of a giant water tank up the side of the map here, and that giant water tank will have to expand it as it goes on, but that should allow us to store just gargantuan amounts of water if we do it right. The steam turbines we're putting in here will also require some cooling, of course couple of steel aqua tuners down here will provide all of that cooling. We just got to make sure the temperature in here doesn't go above 275. Should be easy. We're going to keep the temperature in here about 180. This place is not about power production. It's about filtration and a little bit of power production on the side. I just realized we're doing an awful lot of heat power production here. You know, nuclear reactors for heat and, well, magma. This should be interesting. I've never tried to go max, well, try to optimize or maximize the amount of geothermal power you get. And I think we can do an awful lot of damage to the magma biome with this. I really would like to actually strip out the magma biome by the end of this map. Now, one thing, we're not recycling the water comes at, coming out of these steam turbines. The water coming out of these steam turbines is going to be sent off to a storage tank. I'm thinking we stick the storage tank over here or start it over here. This will be the bottom of it, and it's then just going to continue straight up through here. We're going to make, well, we're going to dump all of our water into this storage tank here as we slowly filter it all. I don't know how big the tank is going to get, but I'd like to give us lots and lots of room. So I've made sure that it won't interfere with that vent, and it should still be able to keep going up this section. Uh, we'll have to delete some of that stuff, but that's fine. We can deconstruct it. Once we hit the ice biome, um, um, yeah, I'd prefer not to go through that ice biome, but if we need space for the water, we need space for the water. Uh, for the time being, I am just walling in the top of these here. This whole area, we're going to have these steam turbines sitting in a layer of liquid, and we're going to use that layer of liquid to cool them. Instead of uh, giving them a gas pressure in here, I prefer to keep this place as uh, gas-free as possible. At the same time, I've also walled in this section down here. I, it's, we can service this later if we want to, but I'd prefer to seal this off while we're booting everything up, just in case, because if gas gets down here, things could get really, really, really toasty really quickly, and we would not like that. We've got enough room up here to stick in four liquid vents, so we should be able to dump in 40 kilos of water per second if we need to. We won't want that, but we've also left in ourselves enough expansion room that we can start strapping more steam turbines on top as we go, if things go that direction. I don't know if they will. Over here, we can't really fit in the last steam turbine. Reason being is if we stick that in there, we've no way of actually getting past this point. Uh, they won't be able to move down, so I think we're stuck with three steam turbines there until we move that liquid lock. And I'm not moving that liquid lock for a while. That can stay there. We'll, we'll worry about that later. For the time being, we're just sweeping up the last of the junk, which I think we're done. And now it's time to put in the layers of liquid. For our liquid layer, we are using super coolant. Do we have to? No. Are we going to? Yes. Because it's, you know, we're, we're hitting that stage of the game and we have so much super coolant, we might as well. Uh, I only used one bottle empty your load, so that's 200 kilos. Uh, if you use too much, you can actually flood the steam turbines, but that seems to be working just fine. It's about 10 kilos per tile all the way along. That should act as a good transfer medium with our uh, radiant liquid pipes here. It actually gives... It's far better to use liquid when transferring temperature to the steam turbines just because gas pressure is so low. You, you know, two kilos of gas pressure gives far less heat transfer. At the same time, liquids are usually better at transferring stuff anyway. All right, with that done up, all we have to do now is get outputs from these. Now, I have to get the output from all of these suckers, and I have to put it all over here. I just realized this is 30 kilos of water output. We could definitely filter a lot of water very quickly. Let me think for a moment. That there looks like a good amount of messy. Though I will have to make a few modifications here. All of that's just going to jump, well, a lot of water in there. I'm wondering, can this actually keep up with the heat production? Um, you know what? Who cares? Probably. 
maybe. Also, we're going to be bringing in the water from the top, so I might want to do some modifications here to how this goes across. Actually, there we go. That means everyone avoids that section and we can fill that full of drop-offs. Now, we should only really need to put in 30 kilos at a time, but we'd like to have options to put in some more water, so we're going to see if we can boil 40 kilos per second. Uh, I, I'm really not sure if this can generate enough heat for that. I mean, early on, maybe? Oh, if we can do 30, I'd be very happy, to be honest. Oh well, let's uh, let's finish off our piping and <laughs> hope this monstrosity will turn on. To dump the necessary amount of water in here, we're going to start over this side. What we're going to do is wall this section in, and we can start stripping out this water, so as we need to extend this water tank, we can do it, because, well, this water should hopefully be gone. Then we'll have to extend up these pipes, of course, and keep increasing the, the, the height of the water. But I think we can make ourselves a rather large liquid tank over this side. To help out, we've got airflow tiles to make sure the tank won't break. We could make it three layers thick. But you know what? Airflow tiles do make it look pretty. And we're going to have insulated tiles on the outside. All of this stuff is going to be 95C water. So we can't be messing about here. A nice insulated hot water tank on the right hand side or all the way up the right hand side of the map should be fine. Now this is probably going to take a little bit of time for all our dupes to build this. The amount of piping is a lot. Also the walls and oh yeah, and there's a power wire that has to run all the way from over that section. But they'll get it done soon enough. They're, they're an industrious bunch. We are ready to turn this monstrosity on. I am not sure how well this is going to work, to be honest. I haven't done any testing on this. Also, we're going to want clean water to start. We're not going to want any uh, polluted water. Polluted water would be a problem because it could potentially off-gas in the tank. I want to pour in some water first. Oh, God. We'll start with just 10 kilos, and then we'll work our way up from there. So we'll probably hook up this side one dump it down here and then we'll have to set this temperature sensor. We're going to be aiming for to keep the temperature in here above 180 degrees. So 180 should be fine. Uh, the moment we start putting some water in though, we're going to want to fill the... Actually, you know what we can do? We can fill the super coolant loops right now. These are the super coolant loops that are going to go around through the aqua tuners. Uh, you just come. There we go. Done. Uh, we'll let that fill up. I've set this to, what is it? If, yeah, 50C. We don't need this turning on just yet, especially considering they've no medium to dump their heat into. They just overheat rather rapidly. But that should go through there. What are these actually? Ah, 40 degrees. Oh, wow, that super is actually pretty hot to start. Never mind. And that will at least fill up that loop. Once that loop is filled, we'll fill the second one. That is both loops filled. Now all we got to do is chuck in some water. All right, one at a time. Uh, which one of you... Well, you've all got nothing but clean water to come in. That's a good start. We'll just... Oh, that is ceramic we've got down here. So we'll hook you up. Cancel whatever other piping was going to go in there. Uh, that should hit the plate. Perfect. Now you, if the temperature is below 180, engage the doors. Oh, sorry. Above 180. There we go. Oh. Oh. Yeah, we better make sure to turn off the steam turbines as well. I don't want them processing any of that power just yet. Uh, for that, we're going to need to run... Hmm, I think, actually, we'll turn this off just for the moment. No. Yep, yeah, that was... That was stupid. We'll leave that at 180. We'll put in a power battery over here. This whole system is going to be designed to kick on if we start running low on power on the grid. So we'll just stick in a gold battery right there. Give me some automation wires. We're going to have to run... Oh my god, we're going to have to run a lot of automation wires, aren't we? Uh, give me one moment here while I run all the necessary automation wires. With the automation wires mostly in place, though... Well, the first part of the setup is to have this hooked up to the main grid on a smart battery. If the energy on the grid starts to go below 40%, this will kick in and start actually just chucking power onto the network. This is to make sure... Actually, let's make that 55. Oh, there are smart batteries that are most of our storage, so... Or dumb batteries are, are most of our storage, so we'd want to make it 55%. That means this will only kick on when we need more power. Also, as well as that, I want to chuck a bunch of water in here so that we turn all of that steam back into water, and then we can break back in here and fix those aqua tuners. That was a mistake on my part. And f actually, we can just keep dumping water in there for a while, can't we? Yeah, so long as no polluted water gets pulled in... Yeah, I think that would be the smart plan. We can just keep dumping in water here, and then we can flash boil a lot of it all at once. We really don't care because, well, our power source is the Earth's core. Well, most of the steam has managed to condense, but it's just the rest of it is so minute it won't condense. We'll put in some temperature shift plates here. If any of the steam tries to escape, it should turn into liquid there. And all we want to do is get in here and fix those aqua tuners. Then we can turn the sucker back on again. 
should only be a minute. As you can see, the gas does not seem to be able to make it past that temperature shift plate. The temperature shift plate just instantly liquefies it. You can even see the little droplets falling down. But honestly, that's milligrams of liquid, so I'm not even sure it's turning into liquid or it's just evaporating. There's a... or it just disappears. There's a, a, a thing where if gases get small enough, when they liquefy, they don't actually appear. All right, and you... Yeah, we'll grab out uh, whatever gunk is in here. I really would like if this place was serviceable, but to do that, we need to put in a liquid lock, and I'd prefer to put in something with visco gel. Unfortunately, we don't have any just yet, so we've got this area down here where we can chuck in a visco gel airlock later on. And you guys, yeah, let's make that a level nine. Just get those uh, lumps of steel out of there, and we'll uh, we can s s fire this up. Now comes the moment of truth. There is three hundred kilos of water down here along the bottom of this, so when we turn this on. Will the magma be able to keep up? That's the question. So let's make that 180 C. And if the temperature is above that, there we go. Yep, that that's keeping up all right. Dear Lord, that's easily keeping up. I I think I think we're good to turn on a couple more uh, liquid pipes. Hell yeah! Give me another one. In fact, yeah, let's not mess about. 30 kilos per second. Can this system handle it? Let's find out, shall we? Due to some mistakes on my part, and by mistakes I mean pressing the mute button and then not unmuting myself, uh, there's unfortunately a few little steps that we missed. But they're not too serious. Uh, down here there was some changes made. Once we started, uh, Once we started getting into the polluted water, the polluted water caused us a problem. You see, as the water comes down here, it hits the plate. And let's go to liquids. And you'll see, like, you can see the blobs of water, they exist for just a split second. But that was enough to cause us issues because the temperature sensor was right there. And because the temperature sensor was right there, the blobs of liquid would keep tricking it into thinking it was cooler than it really was, and it kept engaging the doors and heating this place up too much. It wasn't too bad. It was set to 180, but it was causing the gases in here to go to 200, and sometimes the tiles down here would hit 300 plus, which caused the, uh, the dirt to cook to sand, and it caused sand tiles to form. Well, one sand tile before we caught it. So we broke in, and we stuck in a mining drill. Mining drill will take care of any more sand issues, but we shouldn't have any because we've moved the thermal sensor up there. And we set it to 175, and you'll see this whole place is now, well, okay, it's a little bit hotter up top than it is down the bottom, but the whole place now doesn't seem to have any more problems with that happening. You can see the temperature there gets a bit toasty, but it's not so bad. At the same time, this magma is eating all of this like a champ. We have 40 kilos of water getting dumped in here per second, and this thing's like, yep, come at me, bro. No bothers at all. Earth's core definitely has uh, has water on lock. Anyhow, with all of that done, we well, we made a little liquid lock in here, but uh, I've turned that off. I don't want anyone going in there unless we really have to. I, I would prefer this to be not a serviceable area. At the same time, there is some liquid shutoffs installed up here. That way, when we want to, we can turn on and off this. And I have installed one mod because we sort of need it f to make this work correctly. And it's something that I don't think is too crazy. If we go under ventilation here and we get an atmosphere, where is it? One moment. Never mind. It's under automation. We're going to grab a couple of Atmos sensors here and we're going to just sort of plug them into the system. And the reason for this is, well, the gas pressure in here is going to get rather high and we want it high. If we have, say, 900 kilos of gas pressure in here, it's like a giant storage tank of energy. At any point, we can turn on the steam turbines, and next thing you know, we've loads of power. For example, we can just go, boom, and there we go. What have we got? We've got 745, 749, 747, so say 740 watts for each one of them. Oh, actually, that one's there is a little bit low. What's going on on this end? Your 174... Your, your wattage is a little bit lower than we'd like, but it's fine, it's fine. Even if we take the lowest one, say 670 watts, that's still 10 kilowatts of power we're getting out of this. So it's a 10 kilowatt of power battery that we can call upon whenever we want. At the same time, it does filter our water. I think we'll stop putting in the clean water as best we can, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll filter out all of this polluted water, this salt water and all that, and then we'll exclusively feed it polluted and salt water. We can take the cool steam vents and just dump them directly into the water tank, but this stuff over here, yeah, that can go get dumped in there. This stuff here also can get dumped in there. That over there, that can also get dumped in there, and where is it? I think there's another one around here somewhere, or maybe it's on another planet, who knows. We can take all of those and we can just dump any non-clean water in here it gets boiled away and we get power out of it. Just uh, let me finish off these Atmos sensors. With the Atmos sensors installed, we have, uh, well, we have a new way of doing things right about now. What happens here is this sensor detects if the gas pressure in here is above 950 kilos, and that was the mod we installed. 
the mod is called no sensor limits so you can go about like normally you can only go out to 20 kilos with this and then it, it caps out there but we wanted something with a little bit more oomph to it so this detects if the pressure goes above 950 kilos if it does it shuts off the inputs we don't want any water coming in here if it's above 950 kilos because that means we're getting close to the the 1000 kilo mark if we get to 1000 kilos none of the water will be able to get in anymore and this whole thing will jam up so instead we have this shut off and don't add any more liquids that means we've got 950 kilos of water pressure all the way throughout here just imagine this entire thing is being full of water that's how much water will be trapped in there and it's all basically free energy at the same time this atmosensor sensor over here is det detects if we have 940 kilos of pressure in here if it detects there's 940 kilos of pressure then that means well pressure's getting a little bit high let's turn on the the steam turbines and the steam turbines will basically suck it 30 kilos of water per second and that 30 kilos of water per second gets dumped over here in our liquid tank which we're going to keep extending and there we go it's just a nice automated way of taking all the water dumping it in here and only chucking it out once we've got enough at the same time there's also this automated smart battery over here it detects if there's not enough uh, power on our network if there is not enough power it turns on the grid and we get more more power as well so this gets us more power this gets us well filters the water depending on what way we want it just easy simple and very very brute force i really do like this we can we can filter 30 kilos of water per second and look at this the magma biome is like yeah bring it on we're good no problems at all eating it all none of it's even started to solidify you have to imagine this as it's boiled this much space worth of water plus whatever's over here as well it's going to be a long while before this starts to solidify and even when it does start to solidify we can come back down here to eat these wall segments and just dig tunnels out here put in temperature shift plates that side and this side and just draw in more heat all to this one location this is going to be uh yeah this is going to last a long time i think a very very long time you know i i spent way too long playing around with this and getting it working right at the same time i was uh, building all of this i put in a gas pump or two here and there what we did was we went over here and we stuck in this gas pump this gas pump is hooked up to a filter oxygen gets filtered right back to over here and anything that's not oxygen gets dumped into space that, that, we're not following that tube it goes all the way to space trust me and what that has meant is all the gases over this side have been mostly filtered out they've been pulled away from this side and chucked in here we also surrounded this thing in an awful lot of deodorizer so any polluted oxygen usually got filtered now just recently we've put in airflow tiles here that should mean all of the gases on this side are going to start getting sucked across We'll probably end up putting a gas pump or two over here to help that along. But this does mean we're starting to slowly but surely filter out all the gases on that side of the map. And the, the game actually does feel like it's actually speeding up a bit. Though we... yeah, there, there's problems left. We still have to filter all of this, all of this. I think we'll take all of that water and instead of dumping it in here, we'll just take it and... Uh, well, the clean water anyway will get dumped straight into our clean water tank. Which is going to be... well, when this is extended, it's going to be very, very, very tall. All the salt water, polluted water, well, we might actually keep some of the polluted water, we're going to need that for cops, I imagine. But most of the salt water, uh, brine, that kind of stuff, that's all going to go through our, uh, our very jumbo-sized water filtration project. Anyway, I, uh, I, I hope you enjoyed and good luck. <laughs>